All right, let's go. Um, hi, my name is Andrew Herbstnell. I'm a systems engineer in the uh, networking and security business unit at VMware. Um, focused on, on NSX and a number of the use cases, some of the interesting use cases that that provides. I've got some of my colleagues here with me today, uh, Thomas from product management and uh, Marcos as well. And we're going to cover a range of things today. Uh, I'm going to go in, uh, give a bit of an overview, a bit of a, a technical uh, coverage of the NSX integration with Neutron. We're going to cover a little bit of VIO uh, and Kubernetes as well and what that means to NSX. And Marcos is going to go and uh, show us that dangerously live uh, a bit later. So I'll keep my bit short and sweet and to the point, but it'll help set the context for everything. And then we'll get into some of the cool techie stuff. All right, let's get going. Uh, so just a, a quick overview of what we're talking about today. And this will make a lot more sense when we get to the demo is uh, we're talking about OpenStack as our cloud consumption layer. That's the management layer of a set of infrastructure. And we're putting the VMware STDC underneath that. So that's our hypervisor. That's our uh, software-defined networking uh, platform, which is NSX. Uh, and we're going to go into more detail on the NSX side of things. It's also our storage uh, in vSphere underneath OpenStack. So OpenStack is our cloud management layer that provides the API and the horizon interface to go and drive all of the virtual infrastructure. And the virtual infrastructure is VMware's software-defined data center solution. So specifically uh, NSX, what we have here is uh, our manager that provides the API for NSX. That's what Neutron talks to when we're driving the infrastructure. Uh, we've got our control plane separate to that, so we're decoupled. And our control plane is a set of controllers that you deploy, and that uh, holds all of the state of our virtual infrastructure and helps uh, orchestrate things like overlays and uh, provision uh, configuration changes to our infrastructure. Our control plane split into two components. We have the central controllers. They're the VMs that you deploy that take care of the state orchestration of the platform. We've got our local control plane. That's a component that. Uh, translates calls from our central control plane down to the type of hypervisor we're using. And if you move down the stack here into the data plane, you'll see that I've got ESX and KVM listed. So NSX works with both ESX and KVM and bare metal and public cloud and a number of other areas as well. And that's why we've decoupled central control plane from local control plane. We have an architecture now that can scale irrespective of the hypervisor you're using, the endpoint type you've got, and uh, whether or not you're bare metal or you know, physical or, or what have you. So that's our architecture, and it scales quite nicely. And that's what NSX looks like. And that's that virtual infrastructure layer underneath OpenStack. So we're driving everything through Neutron specifically for NSX. So let's go into uh, just a little bit of a, an overview of what an environment looks like from an architectural perspective. And then we'll get into the integration points. Uh, when you're building a vSphere environment, we have hosts. We pull them together into what's known as clusters in, uh, in VMware speak. And essentially, it takes all of your compute uh, resources, memory, CPU, and disk, and network, and combines them together into one giant virtual host. And there are some things that we can do in our hypervisor when it comes to uh, containers and VMs uh, in a cluster format that allows you to move around live vMotion we've had you know, for a decade. And some of those features in vSphere specifically is uh, what are brought to you through the cluster uh, construct in NSX. And I've just got a couple of points here around some of the different design options we have. Uh, with switching, we can do, typically, we recommend uh, three clusters, separate function. You're going to have a separate management from some of your edge functions. An edge function in NSX is our uh, egress from the NSX environments, our north-south kind of connectivity, and it provides the resources for some of the uh, stateful services. Some of this will make a bit more sense uh, in a moment. Uh, and then we've got our compute clusters. Typically, we scale them independently, sometimes uh, you know, on a tenant basis, project basis, or you know, you're flexible uh, with as many of those as you want. And that's the typical architecture. And smaller scale, though, you can start to collapse these. Uh, but it's just generally good practice to separate your management environment to a few hosts on the side so you can change control it separately. And you've got the availability of those components, including OpenStack in this case. Um, so that's just on the vSphere side. So let's jump into VIO now. I've mentioned Neutron a couple of times. Um, NSX was born out of an acquisition by VMware of a company called Nicera in 2012. And that brought uh, 
with that acquisition uh, a number of uh, you know, engineering capabilities and uh, some code that was written by NYSERA, which became the Neutron Project in OpenStax. So that was a NYSERA invention and you know, incubated and uh, iterated on uh, through VMware. Um, so that's, that's the heritage of Neutron. We've been involved in the OpenStack community for quite some time, uh, even prior to that, and that sort of solidified uh, our involvement there. Uh, uh, some other aspects as well around Open vSwitch and that that came uh, about as part of the efforts through NYSERA. Uh, over the years, though, so NSX is not new. It's you know, six years old. We're at version 6 dot something of NSX now, and uh, we, we've gone through a lot of uh, you know, changes and updates uh, to the platform as we've learned new things from our customers. And uh, so, you know, it's been around a while. Now, OpenStack is a use case for networking. Neutron is the component that's driving our APIs. So as you can see in the diagram here, we've got Neutron, your project, and it's driving the API of the NSX manager. So anything that you can provision in Neutron, you know, routers, security groups, load balances, networks, NSX is going to be fulfilling those API requests from OpenStack. And that's the, the integration point. The nice thing about that is it's one driver for Neutron. It comes packaged with OpenStack, in this case, VMware integrated OpenStack. That's our commercial distribution. If you want OpenStack and you like the idea of VMware infrastructure underneath, we package it all up. It's tested, it's got lifecycle built in, and we'll provide you uh, support for that. So that's our OpenStack. It's called VIO. Uh, but Neutron comes bundled with this plugin to drive NSX. And it means you don't need to touch it. You don't need to change out the plugin. You don't need to, you know, go and do custom ML2 things and, and some of that sort of stuff because you've settled on the fact that NSX will be your endpoint. It's one driver, and away you go. Same for uh, storage uh, for, you know, Cinder, Glance, and Nova for placement. So that's all through vCenter, and that's the abstraction points that I wanted to highlight on this picture here. So one set of drivers, and they're the same for every VIO deployment on Earth. Right? So it makes uh, stability good, simple. We know exactly what's going on if you want that kind of you know, functional behaviors in your OpenStack platform. But uh, now, we've built these drivers with upstream and they're open source. If uh, you want more flexibility than an opinionated uh, distribution like OpenStack, in VMware integrated OpenStack offers, or you want to do something a bit more bleeding edge with some of the projects, then you can go and build you know, your own upstream OpenStack and you can still leverage those same drivers, or you could you know, go with another distribution if you wanted to as well. You have that freedom of choice and you don't have to give up uh, the benefits of our virtual infrastructure that OpenStack is driving underneath. You can leverage the same drivers through these uh, integration points there. Uh, and you can also use KVM as a hypervisor. Perhaps uh, you want to use NSX, Specifically, you want the software-defined networking component that VMware offers under Neutron, but you want to run KVM hypervisors, then you can still mix and match those drivers accordingly, and away you go. So that's kind of what it looks like there. Different components touching each other. Okay, now, NSX. So that was just a bit of an overview. Uh, there's some things that you want to do in Neutron, specifically and NSX behaves in a certain way when you start firing these calls off. So you're going to go and create networks, and we're going to go and attach instances to those networks. And a network in NSX is our overlays. It's a software-defined uh, layer two domain uh, that you can go and attach instances to. And then we're going to create uh, other networks with other instances. Perhaps we want to uh, break out a, a multi-tiered application or something like that. And DHCP services. Again, this is something you would do in OpenStack. It's driven through NSX, and it would provide that function uh, for all of the logical switches in this case. Uh, distributed firewalling. So this is when you create security groups uh, in Neutron. Uh, the way that that gets translated through NSX is to our distributed hypervisor firewall. So every single node can actually enforce stateful firewalling you know, per virtual NIC uh, of the VM and the host. So that's what we're talking about there. Um, routers, neutron routers. And so we, we, again, translate those calls into NSX. NSX now provides the routing function uh, underneath OpenStack. Um, you can use NAT or no NAT. Uh, and we can start to do interesting things uh, by you know, chaining networks. And we have a concept of a tier zero router as well. That's the router in NSX that talks to the physical world, right? 
Cool. So let's just move this along so we can uh, get to the demo. Um, there's a bunch of supported topologies. I'm actually not going to read through all of this. Uh, but we can do NAT, no NAT. You can do routing. We support you know, full BGP and everything else uh, from a networking perspective. And then low balancing and security uh, under Neutron for some of those other micro-segmentation and high availability use cases. Um, now, VIO. VIO is our distribution of OpenStack. It comes bundled with all of these drivers that I've mentioned. Uh, but with it, uh, we have an additional component called VIO Kubernetes. Now, VIO Kubernetes is just a, a, it's another management component that comes with VIO to allow you to deploy Kubernetes clusters on top of VIO. And this provides the full life cycle of those Kubernetes clusters, scale out, up, you know, up down, uh, doing things like uh, upgrades and create, destroy, all of that sort of thing. So if you want to deploy Kubernetes on top of VIO, it comes built in with the product. And it's called VIO K. Plus, we provide you support, right? So it's a supported uh, Kubernetes lifecycle manager built on top of VIO. And it gives you uh, some of the things mentioned here on, on the slide. And again, this is all on our infrastructure. It's on the software-defined data center, vSphere, NSX, and vSAN. Um, now, this is where it starts to get interesting, because Marcos is going to demo this in, in quite a bit of detail. But uh, traditionally, um, you know, in, in a past life, we've had VMs, and they've had NICs, and they attach to ports, and they've got their connectivity and their network services. But now, with Kubernetes, we're talking pods. And with NSX, we can make <coughs> container pods in Kubernetes and traditional VMs both equivalent and first-class citizens when it comes to networking services. So it, this diagram here, just to sort of go through this a little bit, we're creating our routers. There are tier zeros for northbound connectivity. We've got essentially tenant routers. They're the tier ones. They are multi-tenanted. You can you know, configure these per Kubernetes namespace. Right? You get a router, and it's distributed again, because that's what NSX does in our hypervisor. And then we can create logical switches and attach Kubernetes container pods to those logical switches. One of the benefits of doing that is we now bring the distributed firewalling functions, security groups, and whatnot, directly to container pods and Kubernetes. And this is all doing, done uh, through our network container plugin. Um, so there's a few different things going on here, but. The takeaway is that uh, NSX allows you to provide the same networking services in NSX to container pods and Kubernetes through our plugin uh, that you would do for you know, traditional VMs. And uh, with that, I think I'll uh, hand over to Marcos to uh, explain what we're going to demonstrate. Thank you, Obi. So what we have here, we're going to do a demo of our Kubernetes and NSXT uh, integration. So I'm going to do it with my computer. I'll be switching uh, laptops here in a moment. Uh, but let me just go through the applications. This application, by the way, was written by an ex-colleague of ours, a German guy, super smart. And this is a very fun application. It's called Planespotter. Okay, it's a three-tier app that has a web tier uh, that in uh, this case is going to be implemented in Kubernetes. It has an app tier where we do all the application processing, and then it has a database tier. And the database tier consists of a relational database that, we're, uh, that implement, it's implemented in MySQL, and also an in-memory database uh, that is implemented in Redis. So this is basically the application. What the application does, it's uh, in, the, in the web page, you're going to basically be able to search for planes. Uh, from a, a set of a, a data set, a static data set hosted in the MySQL database. So you can search who built this plane, which airline owns this plane. It's a very simple uh, query uh, application logic that he implemented in the app tier. And we're pulling, we're fetching that data from the MySQL database. But if we integrate the Redis piece, what he's done in this application is correlate the plane that you are looking for with the fact or um, um, the, the actual airborne state of that plane. Is that plane flying? And if so, where is it right now? And he's actually doing that by pulling live data, live GPS and tracking data from the internet and then storing that in Redis. And then his up here is correlating the static data from the MySQL database with the dynamic data. And it will tell you that that plane that you're looking for is actually flying or not. Very, very uh, uh, 
interesting application that will demonstrate the capabilities of NSX across multiple endpoints. And what are those multiple endpoints? In this particular demo, what I've done is I've put the static database as an OpenStack instance. It lives as an OpenStack instance inside of VIO. Okay, it's a VM. And everything else, I've done it in Kubernetes. Okay, so I have the web tier, the app tier, and the Redis tier implemented as a Kubernetes uh, application. So this will show that NSX can actually see and treat Kubernetes pods and VMs the same way. In other permutations of this demo, we've been showing this application at VMworld and some other places. In other permutations of this demo, uh, some people have the front end running in AWS, have the back end running in Cloud Foundry or Pivotal Application Services, just to show that we understand all these different endpoints in NSX. And we have seen versions of this demo where Redis is actually implemented in a bare metal server. Right? In this case, we are talking about container pods and VMs. And again, the VM is an OpenStack instance owned by VIO, and everything else is, has been implemented in Kubernetes. So let me switch um, laptops here. Let's see if this works. Perfect. So let me just open my RDP again to get full screen here, and I'll walk you through uh, the demo in a moment. Um, again, very simple application. Uh, it's not created as of now. I have done, uh, there are a com combination of products, all the products that uh, Andrew talked about. I have used Vio Kubernetes to create a very simple cluster, very simple geometry, one master and two uh, Kubernetes workers. Vio Kubernetes works on top of OpenStack or on top of our OpenStack. So what that looks like in OpenStack, right, that Kubernetes cluster is just three instances sitting on a neutron network and connected to the rest of the world with a neutron router. So this is the OpenStack view of that Kubernetes cluster. You can also see here the MySQL database, which I configured just using OpenStack APIs, and where I put all the static data representing the manufacturers and the owners of the planes that we're gonna be uh, searching in a moment, right? And finally, remember, this is all running on top of VMware infrastructure. So at the end of the day, all these Kubernetes clusters and OpenStack instances are vSphere VMs that your vSphere admins have been doing and troubleshooting and optimizing for years. So I have a compute cluster and a management and edge cluster. My management components are listed here. I have my OpenStack, I have VIOK, I have the controllers for NSX, all that running in the management cluster. And in my compute cluster, I have my Kubernetes cluster, master and two worker nodes, as well as that instance, that OpenStack instance. Okay, so it's a multi-layer um, uh, solution here. So let's go ahead and run this demo, okay? Um, first of all, let's uh, populate my variables uh, uh, in my environment, and let's uh, go ahead and create a namespace. As uh, Andrew mentioned, when you create a namespace in Kubernetes, and again, the developer or application owner that is working with Kubernetes doesn't even know that this is integrated into NSX. He's just creating a namespace. Um, I'll show you the before and after. I'm gonna create a namespace and just the fact of me creating a namespace drives automatic network configuration in NSX. Uh, this is the NSX view. I don't know if you can read that. Let's see if we can make it a little bigger. Uh, but basically I have uh, what we call logical switches. These are layer two networks and this is the before. And if I refresh that, I should see here a new logical switch created called the plane spotter logical switch. Right, this is that network that was automatically provisioned. And if I look at which, what kind of things are connected to that logical switch, right now I only have a logical router port. So the mere fact that I created a namespace drove the automatic creation of a layer two network and a router on that logical switch. And now the system is waiting for me to start scheduling pods on top of that automatic topology, which we're gonna do momentarily, okay? So let's go ahead and create the app tier first. By the way, this application is on GitHub with very, very clear instructions on how to deploy. It's a, it's a lot of fun. So I went ahead and created the app tier. So I'm creating that, if you remember that diagram, that middle box there that has all my application logic. Uh, that obviously created a deployment, a config map, and a service. Um, I'm showing here the service called Plane Spotter Service, and I'll, I'll show you why that is important uh, in a moment. 
right? And then um, in that, I have a pod spec in that YAML that basically says my application tier is two Kubernetes pods, okay? Uh, which are show, uh, showing running, in running state right there. So if I refresh the number of logical ports that are in my logical switch, now I see to port. And the reason why logical port is important in NSX is because this is the same construct that we use for bare metal, VMs, cloud native applications, and containers. So a logical port is a logical port. It's a first class citizen, and VMware uh, NSX doesn't distinguish between one map to a VM and another one to map to a container. So with this, we demonstrate that we can treat containers, VM, bare metals at the same, uh, in the same manner. So let's continue to build our application. I'm going to do, uh, now I'm going to deploy the front end, right? And the front end is a web tier. And the web tier has an ingress. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, an ingress is a layer seven load balancing rule that basically maps. Uh, let me show you the services and the pods, and then I'll get back to, to that ingress. Um, so now I have a new service called front end, and I should have now four pods in my application because I've added two more for the web front end. Right? So if I go to NSX and I refresh this, I should see now five logical ports. The one for the router and the one for the four Kubernetes pods that, have been, uh, that I have created. And this will come up momentarily here. In the meantime, while we'll wait for that to come up, for the containers to be in running state, let me show you the ingress. Uh, in Kubernetes and ingress, and the typical implementation regards an ingress controller and a service type and all that, uh, an ingress is a layer seven load balancing rule. When you integrate Kubernetes with NSX, this gets implemented as a layer seven uh, load balancing rule, HTTP redirect rule, or HTTPS redirect rule, inside of an NSX load balancer. So we don't use the uh, open source load balancers of, uh, of Kubernetes. We replace, that's another component that we replace when you do Kubernetes on top of NSX. So let's go ahead and refresh the application, and it's up. So at this point, I should be able to go to that URL and hit my application. There it is. And, if we're, and, and, the, and the person who wrote the app was kind enough to add a little bit of a, a, a widget here that tells me the uh, application health. And right now, everything is shown as running except for that Redis tier, right? So I'll show you the before and after. This is going to appear broken because it always fails when it's tried to, to, to connect to a database for the first time. It didn't in this case. And let's go ahead and search for planes uh, for American Airlines. I have to use uh, uh, U.S. Airlines because this is FAA data. Um, so there it is. So those are all the planes owned by American Airlines that are basically in this MySQL database, which again is an OpenStack instance, right? And as you can see, it's, they're all showing uh, as, you know, airborne. The answer is no, that's very unlikely, right? It's very unlikely that the largest airline on the planet doesn't have any planes right now uh, flying. That is because we have not integrated the Redis piece into the application, which we're going to do now. Okay, let's go ahead and provision Redis and the, uh, and the TCP stream converter that he wrote. Right? This will provision two more pods for a total now of seven pods and three services. So let's go ahead and show that. Okay. So I, have, I should have now my application fully operational. Let's go ahead and check NSX again, make sure the pods are up and running. They're still coming up. So let's give it a, a, a couple seconds. And again, what we're going to see now, once Redis, the Redis tier is up, is that now we'll be able to correlate planes from American Airlines, manufacturer uh, data and all that, models, things like that, with uh, the fact on whether or not that plane is airborne, is flying. So this will come up uh, momentarily. It, 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 it takes, a, takes a while. While we wait for this to come up, I mean, think about some of the questions that you may uh, want to ask us. We have our product management team represented here in the audience, so they can tell you about roadmap and plans for additional integration services, both for Kubernetes and OpenStack. OK, so now my application is up. Let's go to the App Health widget. And yes, Redis now shows running. We're going to do a search again for American Airlines, okay, and I have a few minutes left. So there it is, so I, in the first table, one of those planes in the inventory shows as airborne. Let's go ahead and click on that guy, right? And now it's a fly from uh, Chicago 
O'Hare to McCarran in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. So someone is going uh, to have fun this weekend. And, um, it's, it's, um, and it also shows the altitude and all that. So this combines right, the fact that now I had static data and dynamic data correlated in my application. And what I cannot emphasize, uh, emphasize enough is that this application is multi-endpoint. We're talking about Kubernetes and uh, OpenStack instances in the same app served by the same networking backend, in, in, which in this case is NSX. So, okay, so that's the application. Um, another thing that I wanna show Right? So we have our application working. Another thing that I want to show is um, the capabilities, the tagging capabilities that are also part of our Kubernetes integration. In this case, I have annotations or metadata in my YAML of my app tier where I have added a label, user control, and then you can restrict who does what with Kubernetes, standard Kubernetes role-based access control. But in this case, the application owner, me, decided to add a label called app plain spotter app. Those labels get propagated to NSX, to those logical ports. If I go to NSX, right, and I take, take a look at the logical ports mapped to the app tier, right, I will see that those ports are tagged with that label that I just showed you, control from the YAML. The reason why these tags are important is because these tags are used to define membership criteria for security groups in NSX. I have created a firewall rule um, in NSX that right now is saying my app tier can talk to my DB tier. Remember, the app tier is containers, is Kubernetes pods, the DB tier is a VM, on the MySQL port, which is TCP 3306. And right now that traffic is allowed. Let's see how those two things are talking to each other. We have a utility here called Traceflow, you've probably seen it before, where I can say, okay, I wanna understand the relationship between a container, right? In this case, let's look for the app, one of the app tiers, that guy right there, and the SQL, the MySQL VM that I have in OpenStack. And I want for that packet, I'm going to inject a synthetic packet that will emulate, you know, uh, MySQL traffic on TCP 3306. So let's go ahead and trace that traffic. Remember, the future, okay, live demo. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and, 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 and wait a second here to uh, retrace the traffic. And again, this traffic is allowed. We know it's working because we just searched the MySQL database. But what I wanna prove to you here is that NSX has this utility that can show you the end-to-end -end connectivity between a container and a virtual machine that is owned by the same fabric, by, by NSX. And it tells you exactly all the layer two networks that separate, the layer three routers that separate this two endpoints. And in this case, uh, the container is running on ESX ESXi5 and the virtual machine is running on ESX4 and then there's this logical topology, fully distributed topology that connects the container to the virtual machine and NSX gives you every hop. Let's go ahead and break the application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to inject a problem here in the app. I'm going to change my firewall rule from allow to drop. So when I do that, right, I'm blocking app to DB traffic. Let's see if that actually happens, if I go to app health, right, the connection to MySQL shows now it's uh, pr having a problem. If I go to, my, to search, right, if I go to search for that uh, data, yes, the application is broken, right, I broke the application. Very uh, unfortunate picture uh, that this person chose there. Um, uh, but anyway, so if I retrace, if I retrace, Exact same uh, traffic. I want to understand how app and DB are interconnected. I want to understand why the application is broken. NSX in a moment will tell me, okay, yes, there is a firewall rule in NSX that is blocking that traffic. That firewall rule, right, is firewall rule 16504. That if you remember, I go back to my firewall, is that firewall rule right there. So I injected a problem. It's a problem that I, I made up. But right, but I'm using the, trace, the traceability and the capabilities of NSX to display the end-to-end -end connection between completely distinct and separate endpoints. A container in a pod, in a Kubernetes pod, and a VM in, a, in an OpenStack instance. Okay? So... With that, I think that's my demo. I have an extra demo here for network policy, which I'll be happy to show you uh, offline, but I want to leave uh, time for Q&A. 
Um, but um, we also integrate network policy into our uh, NSX integration with Kubernetes. Uh, you define a network policy in a YAML and we automatically drive the creation of firewall rules in the uh, NSX distributed firewall. Let's go ahead and fix my app because I don't, I don't want to leave it uh, in a bad state. So, I, so I'm going to change the firewall to allow and then this should all be green and good to go. Okay. And I think that's the last uh, thing that I have in my demo. Um, now we're going to open for Q&A. Hopefully this was an interesting integration. We showed self-service provisioning of Kubernetes clusters with VIOK, obviously running on top of OpenStack, and then NSXT serving the connectivity, security, and elasticity needs of endpoints of the distinct you know, configuration, containers and VMs in my example. Any, any questions or comments? Any NSX customers in the audience? Thank you. <laughs> okay. And this is working for any Kubernetes distribution? Um, yes. So the question is, is this working for any Kubernetes distribution? The answer is yes. It obviously works with the Kubernetes that we include in our own Kubernetes as a service or container as a service solutions like VIOK, PKS, et cetera, right? Um, or VMware PKS, VMware uh, Container Service, uh, but it, it, it can also be integrated into a, a, a do-it-yourself Kubernetes. Absolutely. We also integrate with OpenShift. We have a certified integration with Red Hat OpenShift and their Kubernetes uh, distribution. Okay, any other question? Did you try it with Kata containers in your Kubernetes cluster? No. no there is no support today for Kata containers. In, in, in the Kubernetes cluster. While we don't really care about the runtime in the Kubernetes cluster, Kata is specifically not supported as of right now. Good question. Good question. The question is, um, we need to capture the question in the mic uh, for the YouTube uh, viewer. The question is, um, do you support uh, Kubernetes running on KVM? The answer is yes. We support Kubernetes clusters running on KVM. We support Kubernetes clusters running on bare metal. Okay, the NSXT uh, platform supports it. Everything that you saw here, it could be a KVM uh, VM, or it could be uh, just a bare metal Linux host doing OpenShift, doing Kubernetes. Yes. Any, any other question? Comment? Come on, come on. <laughs> no, nothing? Well, with that, um, we're going to hang around here for another uh, five minutes or so if you want to uh, talk one on one. Uh, like I said, this demo is on GitHub. Just Google GitHub Plane Spotter and you'll see this demo with very, very clear instructions on how to deploy it. It's a fun app and it's one that demonstrates uh, the value of NSX. So thank you so much for your time.